the living God Walking in your destiny Walking in your future Walking in the spirit of the living God
There will be a time when the earth will change, but this is not the time. This is the time men are trying to push it into their own change, into their own agenda, into their own things. But you didn't count on the wind. You never count on the spirit. Ye wicked men, wicked men. You never count on the Holy Ghost to blow the ships again. You never count on the spirit. You never count on the wind. You never count on the Holy Ghost to blow the ships again. Lift up your sails. Let the wind may fill. Lift up your sails. Let the wind may fill. Into Yahoo. Trump. Yes. And Putin. Lift up your hands in your private chambers and bless your God. Bless the God of heaven. Bless the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, Putin, will pull your ship out of danger. I will pull your ship, Donald Trump, back into the place it belongs. And I will fill the sails of Israel that they be at peace and yet obtain more land.
future Take a hold of your future Take a hold of your future Take a hold of your future Double time on the tambour, go A hold of the future
Hallelujah. Come on and let's just praise the Lord just a moment. destiny, a song of tomorrow, a song of setting nations correct, correcting courses of ships and sails and men and tales and lies that have come aboard men's vessels. The enemy never counts on the wind, never counts on these ships sailing. right back after this see what the Lord is going to do today amen
for me. Yes, there is. The Lord said he has a destiny and a destination for you. And if you will just, you say, well, I, I try to hear it. I try to know it. I try to do these things, but I don't seem to catch hold of it. But you know, just by simply trying and staying in the word and say, Lord, here am I today. Use me. And just by flowing along that day, he will get done through you that day what he wanted done. And you won't even realize you've done it. Until the day is maybe over or another day and something is said and you say, you know, that was the Lord. He used me that day. He used me and you'll start to learn his sweet voice. You'll start to learn how good he is. He is absolutely good. You need to settle that in your thinking. God is absolutely good. If he's not absolutely good, then you couldn't absolutely trust him. But he's absolutely good. He knows the plans he has for you. He knows these things. He had plans to prosper you, plans to give you an expected end or a future. Plans to give you a future, my friends. Hallelujah. Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear today that we can learn your word together as a family, that we can learn your plan together as a family. And I give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I want to start over here today. And, and uh, Matthew, let's just go over to the book of Matthew. I think we want to be in chapter uh, 3. Let me, let me look at this and be sure here. Yeah, and look at verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness, or unto all righteousness. He's saying to John, I'm not coming to be baptized for the remission of sin. I'm coming as a sign of my consecration to put everything back right. Everything back right. Did you know that he consecrated that day to do whatever it's going to take? Not only to put nations back on their courses, but to put you back right. Whatever it takes to make you right, he paid the price for that. And he consecrated that day before heaven and earth, all the spirit realm, all the people there, everything. And John, the, the last legitimate high priest of the Old Testament, baptized him, the Lamb of God, that day. Bathed the spotless Lamb, and there was no blemish in him. And he vowed that day before his Father to do what it takes unto all righteousness. All righteousness, to put it all right. Not just in nations, but in your life, to put it right. You know, you say, well, I don't see any way out. But he is your way out. He is the way, the truth, and the life. 
And so when John heard that, it says, then he suffered him or permitted him. Jesus was baptized. When he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. So when he came up out of the water, the heavens opened all the way through the nether world to the throne of God and the Holy Ghost. I believe that him and his father locked eyes. And the Holy Ghost lighted on him bodily like a dove. And the Father spoke from heaven, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And so that day, he consecrated to put it back right. And Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness in chapter 4 to be tempted of the devil, which it wasn't that the Holy Ghost was leading him to be tempted. The word wilderness is a word that means to speak in Hebrew. He went out there to fast and pray, to hear from his father what it was going to take to put it all right. But he consecrated to do it because he came to do the will of his father. And you're part of that will. You're part of that. He didn't plan on leaving you out. He didn't plan on leaving you short. He didn't plan on leaving you with nothing. You're not going to come up short in the kingdom. He did what he did to put it all right again. Hallelujah. And when he did, he said he had fasted 40 days and nights. Now, this is how important it was to him to put it right. He went into a 40 day and night fast. He was afterward, he was hungered. He began to be hungry. And when he did, starvation was trying to set in. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, he came to steal his identity. If he could get his identity, he would get his destiny. And in his destiny was everything to make it right for you and me. And if he could get his identity, he could steal that destiny. And you and I wouldn't have had a chance today. And so he, can, he comes to him and he says this, If thou be the Son of God, because that's the last voice that came from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son. That was Jesus' revelation. He's the beloved Son of God. God in the flesh. And he said, If you be the Son of God, then command that these stones be made bread, because all of creation will listen to what you say. But if he had done that, he would have been living out of the words that came out of Satan's mouth not out of God's. And he said, it is, he said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And that ended that one. So he's still on track with his destiny and yours and mine. Then the devil taketh him up into a holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the, of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Not only saying you don't tempt the Lord thy God, but saying he also is the Lord thy God. He's God in the flesh. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, getting him up into a place and trying to get him to look down on everything else. But Jesus would not relent on his consecration to his father. He wouldn't go back. He wouldn't be lifted up in pride on a high mountain looking down. He wouldn't be lifted up in pride. He came to deliver us. He said he showed him all the kingdoms of the world, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the kingdom of man, the kingdom of angels, the kingdom of man, and the glory of them. And he said unto them, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, or take the lower position. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, and he departed into Galilee, and having uh, 
And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt at Cap in Capernaum, which is on the seacoast and the borders of Zebulun and Nephtali. And Nephtali. Then it, that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, to the people which sat in darkness, saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. So what it is, is that he came to those that were in darkness that had no hope. And he consecrated that day to do it. That's why he never backed out. He never drew back. He finished his course, his destiny, so that you could have yours. And I was just led to tell you that today, that you still have a future. You still have a destiny. And so embrace it. Grab hold of it. Destiny is a place of destination. Destiny includes a destination. If destiny can be detoured, there's another destiny other than the one God planned for you, and that is where you'll end up. See, this predestination that some people are just born, there's been people actually teach their children, you were born in this earth to go to heaven, and you were born to go to hell. You were destined for heaven, and you were destined for hell. I know one such people that told that to their twin sons, and the one they said was going to go to heaven ended up being, the, I think, the worst of them. And the one they said was destined to go to hell ended up really loving God, I think. Now you think of that. It's not, the plan, it's not that it's, you're predestined. Plans are predestined. If you follow a certain path, it's predestined you're going to end up somewhere. But here, destiny is, is a destination. It's a place of destination. If destiny can be detoured to another road or another destiny other than the one God planned for you, then you will end up in another place you'll end up in another place so you have to start staying on your place your destination destiny is a future the air of tomorrow is the place God walks with you now I want you to listen to that destiny is future the air of tomorrow is the place where God walks with you the air of destiny God cannot get bogged down in what is present or what he, he refuses to do this. See, he don't get bogged down into what is now. When he walked out in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1, and he stepped out on the edge of darkness, and that word darkness there means ignorant death. It was nothing but an ignorant death, a quagmire of seed, semen-filled. The Bible even calls it piss-filled waters. It's talking about where everything in the world before Adam died and everything was floating in this quagmire of death. That was the war of Lucifer. And it imploded the earth. And God stepped out on the edge of darkness and said, Light be, let there be light. And there was light. He refused to get into, make his decisions according to what he's seeing in, in the present at that moment. He began to speak destiny. And he spoke out into that darkness and said, Light be. And light was. Now what is that saying? He took command of it with his word. He took command of it with his word, and you're going to take command of your future with his word. You're going to have to take command of what you see present. Well, it's dark right now, Brother Robin. This is a dark time. There's just a, it feels like I'm just in a quagmire of death. Yes, but I'm going to tell you something. Well, that's the perfect time for you to go to the Word and say, I will live and not die in the name of Jesus. God has a future for me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. And you begin to speak and prophesy His Word into that darkness. And it will make light come again. Hallelujah. Destiny is future. The air of tomorrow is the place God walks with you. God cannot get bogged down in what is present 
or what it is that he, he refuses to do this if, to get bogged down into what is. The future or tomorrow is a real world to God. It's a real place for him. And he bids you and I to come and walk in it. The future tomorrow is a real place for the Lord. Did you know that the Lord can do amazing things with the day? If you go back to the creation, the six days of creation, you find out that on the seventh day, God uh, finished his work, and in it, he rested on the seventh day. And one place says, and on it, he rested. So the day is something that God can sit in. The day is something God can rest on. The day is something that recognizes God. God was moving toward a finish when he said, light be. Let there be light. He was moving toward the seventh day. He was already on destination. He was looking into the future, moving toward that destination. And when he did, it was a beautiful finish. Hallelujah. He even put into the creation, he, he told the creation by taking the form of a man that if the man should stray, I'll take flesh and die and rise again after three days and nights. He did that. Now, I want you to look at Genesis 3, and we're going to look at verse 8 for just a minute. We'll take a look at this, and, and I want you to see something here. Genesis 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. You ought to underline that in your Bible, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. It said they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day. Now this word cool is the word ruach or wind. Notice today we started off the program with the wind. The Lord wanted the wind. When we come out here and Austin turned on my amps and things, that wind was already present. It was blowing through the, the pedals were set just right that God had expression. And he was, it was just blowing. And he told me, he said, leave that wind blowing. And let Roxanne intercede when you start the music. Let her intercede for different things. And I didn't know what all she was interceding for. But he said he wanted her to intercede for, for nations and leaders. Benjamin Netanyahu, Donald Trump, and Vladimir Putin. Oh, you mean God would, would speak to a heathen king? Well, now you need to go back and read the scripture. Even if you call him a heathen, you can see where God would raise up people and put on thrones. God knows what's going on in the world and you're just guessing. He knows what's going on behind the scenes. He knows the wicked mouthpieces that are discussing your future and your demise or to use you as cattle to pull, to pull their plan through the earth and yoke you like an ox. He knows, their vo he knows their vocabulary. He knows what they're saying. So he, he blew the wind and had the Holy Ghost Pray through Roxanne, and the Lord gave interpretation of prayer to these three leaders because they're still the three keys. Now, in Genesis 3, 8, and Adam and God would walk together in the cool of the day. This word cool is ruach, or it's wind. By resemblance, it means breath. And figuratively, it's life. Now, you think about that. Breath, wind, it's animation. It's what animates you and every living thing. It means the prophetic spirit. Adam was walking in his future with God. God was coming by and Adam was walking in his future with God. He was walking with him and God was showing him his future, the prophetic spirit. He was seeing down through time. He was seeing things to come. He was seeing a destiny at the end of the 6,000th year. He was seeing all the way through. He had the sight of God. 
God had sight to the seventh day when he began or the 7,000th year. And he had sight beyond, of course, but that's what had to do with you and I. And so Adam was to live out those six days to the seventh day. And so God would walk with him in the cool of the day to show him the 7,000th year. Hallelujah. And he would show him that. Adam was walking in his future with God. Now I want you to look at St. John chapter 3. And let's go to this part of the text. And I hope you're getting something out of all this today. I can only hear you by faith out there. St. John chapter 3. You know St. John 3. It has the, the famous verse. Verse 16. You know that. But I want you to look at verse 8. This is Jesus talking to Nicodemus. Well, it was, yeah, we could start in verse uh, 5 maybe. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, is Spirit. That which is born of the Holy Ghost operates in the Spirit. He said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And then verse 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, truly, truly, amen, amen, I say unto thee. We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. He said, I told you of earthly things, and you believe not. And he said, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So he says, the wind blows where it wants to. And you hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it goes. And he says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Did you know that the word wind there and the word Spirit is the same word? It's the same word. And it's the same meaning, wind. The Holy Spirit. Jesus is telling you the way, the perfect way to walk with God is in your future. The perfect way he wants you to walk with God. He says to walk with, with the Father is in your future. That's the way you do it. You start looking toward your destiny. You start looking at your destiny. And you begin to, to go into your future, and into your destiny. That's what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll have to do what you need to do here. But your, but your destiny, your destiny is huge. Your future and tomorrow is a place of no sin. The past, the present, and the future. The past is is shadows of what was. It's stuff that, that you, you can't grasp, you can't hold. Even if it's good, it's, it's gone. It's already passed. And if it's bad, why do you want to try to embrace it and, and bring it into your now? The present is so fleeting. The moment I say present, it goes into the past. I said present, now it's not present, it's past. And so is that statement. Now it's past and that too. It goes from past into present, but present is now past. So where did the words come from? They come from the Spirit. What is, what is it talking about? The wind. They come from the world of the Spirit, from the future. You, you, you thought of it before you brought it into the present. You were operating in your future. So start taking the word of God and reach into your destiny. 
Whatever promise God gave you in that word is what he means for you to live. Whatever promise he gave you in that word is your tomorrow. So start prophesying your tomorrow. The Lord told me something years ago. This is what he said to me. And I know that today sound, oh, Brother Evan, this sounds so heavy. You're just, you're just talking about things that don't make any sense. But they do to me. I remember the Lord told me one time years and years ago. He was talking about it. I was studying about how he stepped out on the edge of darkness, on the edge of nothing. And it was a world that had been at war and imploded where Lucifer had rebelled. And the Lord spoke these words to me. He said, when he stepped out there, he said, I refuse to live in a world that someone else created for me. And that was profound to me. And then he said this, why do you? He said, I refuse to live in a world someone else created for me, so why do you? See, you're probably some of you that are so depressed. And the only reason, I was telling the team before we started today, that the reason depression comes is because someone has hidden your future from you. Someone has pulled up a curtain and blinded you from destiny. And all you can see is where you're standing. All you can see is where you are. And it's enough where you are to create such a depression. Even if it's not so bad where you're standing, if you knew this is as far as you will ever go, and you can't see yourself progressing at all, it will bring a depression into your life that absolutely could drive you to the ground. And so depression comes from your destiny, your future being hidden from you. You have to stop, stop and start saying this. Uh, God knows the plans he has for me. It's plans to prosper me. Plans to give me an expected end and a future. God has a bright future for you and your children and your grandchildren. And it don't include destruction and death. It don't include you being broke. It don't include you always living in a war-torn nation where you have no freedoms. He means to turn and he'll turn the whole world just to get you your destiny. He'll make everything. Joshua fighting an, uh, an unending battle. Joshua fighting a battle he knew he couldn't win because the time was running out. So Joshua didn't say, well, I gave it my best shot. I stood here until I, I don't have any more time to fight. It's getting dark and I can't see the enemy and we'll have to retreat. Joshua just stopped and said, sun stands still. Moon stands still because this is the destiny God gave this nation was to win in this fight and possess that land out there. So he looked beyond the fight to his destiny, the promise God had made him. You know, I remember hearing years ago Kim Clement talking about one of the greatest prophets we've known in this world, in our time. He said, and probably any time, but he said these words, he said, he was on an airplane and it was going down and it looked like it was not going to make it. And people were screaming and yelling and, and panicking. And he said, I was screaming and panicking with them. He said, and then I heard in my spirit, China and other names of countries and places. And he was prompted to shout it out. So he started yelling it out, China, yelling out different things that was in his spirit. The plane made it safely. You say, why did he do that? Because the Lord reminded him of his destiny and where he promised him he would go. What he promised him he would get to do. And he started yelling out his destination and what God had for him. And there was nothing in the present could crash that plane. So you have to start seeing beyond what has God told you. He told you your children would be saved. He told you you wouldn't be broke all your life in this world. He told you these things. He promised you these things. Stand in the edge of the quagmiric darkness and start yelling your destiny out. Hallelujah. Oh, if we start doing things like that, we start living in our tomorrow. We start living in our future. We start living in the place where our destination is. Hallelujah. And so I don't know how heavy all that is to you. I don't know how, how deep that is to you. 
But it's true nonetheless. It's all true. Praise God. So we begin to look at, at the, the wind of the Spirit. We walk with God in the cool of the day. God was actually walking with Adam. It really means that Adam would go into a euphoric worship. It means he would go into, and this is one of the literal translations, he would go, in the Hebrew words, he would go into a prophetic worship. And when he did, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you how some of these words add up in Revelation when God would walk with him. He would go into a prophetic worship. Adam would. Could you imagine seeing he would be in this worship and him and God would walk in the wind together and Adam saw all the way to the 7,000th year and he saw the millennial reign and he saw everything that would, he saw what it was supposed to be and he would go into a prophetic worship and the God would walk up in the life of the day. His prophetic worship would cause the energy in the earth to come alive. Everything that made the trees live, everything that made the animals, everything that animated it. That's what the word wind is talking about. It was what brought animation and life to all the creation. And Adam's prophetic worship would stir it up to the point that God could walk up in it. and He could see him. See his image and walk with him in the garden in the cool of the day in that wind. And Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, do you see the wind? He said, do you know where it's coming from? He said, the wind blows where it wants to. And you hear the sound, but you can't tell where it comes from and you can't tell where it's going. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. And the word Spirit in capital S here is the same word for wind. He's talking about, he said, you, here you are at this place. God is wanting to restore man back to the euphoric prophetic worship so that the air could actually live around him and that he could come and walk with you. And Nicodemus said, how can these things be? He said, you're a, you're a master in Israel and you don't know this? He said, I can't tell, I tell you of of." of earthly things and you can't believe it how am I going to tell you about these this heavenly thing so you and I Jesus did what it took to make it all right you may be in this world but you're not of this world and you can start going into this worship and you can start saying Lord I worship according to my destiny I praise you according to my destiny not according to what I see right now I, I praise you according to what you've told me will be I praise you according to the plan you've given me and my family I praise you for that Lord and I praise you in that and I'm going to tell you something it will carry you right over that <laughs> Like a bridge over troubled waters. It will carry you right over that troubled sea. Now do you know why Jesus went to sleep in the back of that boat? He laid down and, sleep, and slept until the water. The Bible says the boat was full of water. It was full of water. Well, tell me how he was sleeping if it was full of water. On a pillow. Well, what was he doing? Walking on the water in his sleep. Because you know what he had said? Let us go to the other side. He was always looking at the other side. I'm going to my destiny. Let's go over there. And there's not a storm or a devil big enough to keep me out of it. So he just went to sleep. And so they said, don't you care that we perish? It's obvious you're not going to die. Here you are sleeping on the top of the water. And he got up and dealt with that storm. Peace, be still. Shut up and be still. Shut up, yes. Quit saying things contrary to what I'm called to do. Just be still. And there was a great calm. And it scared those men worse than the storm. So he goes over and delivers the, the Gadarene demoniac and so forth. So I wanted you to hear today. I wanted you to hear in this 11th hour about these things. Start worshiping according to your destiny, not according to what you see. 
There's nothing in this present time big enough to keep you out of that world. Because what you can see, you can enter. And tomorrow's a real world to God. It's a real world to Him. And if you dare live in it with Him, it can be your reality. Hallelujah. And people will look at you. Yes, they will. They'll look at you and say, you're so strange acting. Why? Because you won't operate in fear like they're doing. You won't stand in the present and say, ah, I don't know what to do. I'm so afraid. You're living according to tomorrow. And so today has to be ordered to get you there. Oh, man, that's, a, that's something somebody ought to hear. Oh, you ought to hear that. I mean, I, I, you know. But Brother Robin, I thought you was going to come on here and talk about uh, all these nations and things. Well, maybe I am. But if you start living in your tomorrow, you know what happens? You start looking at, at your destiny, and the present day is ordered to get you there. It's ordered to get you there. The storm kicked up. Well, where did that storm come from that tried to sink the boat? The storm came from those legion of demons that were in that madman. They came out there to meet him in the middle of the water. Maybe sometime I'll do a teaching on Galilee and you'll know why they were there. But he came out there in the middle of the water to stop the Son of God. But the water held him up. And he just slept on the top of the water because the day had been ordered to get him to the other side. And he told all the men, let us go. And if they had arrested in him and said, you know, we're just going to go to sleep too. Ain't nothing we can do about this. We're just going to go to sleep too. And maybe they would have looked up and said, yeah, just shut up and be still. We're going to rest with him. Somehow, miraculously, that boat would have found its way to the other side. Now, how do I know that? Because when he came to them walking across the water, there is one scripture that says when he got to the boat and stepped in the boat, immediately it was to the other side. The day was ordered to get him there. When Kim began to speak out the nations he was going to go to, it ordered that plane to get him there. Even if the plane wasn't flying to China, it had to land him safely so he could get on another one. So if you, start, if you start living and worshiping according to your destiny, the day, the life of the life of the day is ordered for you to walk with God right into it. That's what it was coming for. That's why he came up in the life of the day. Adam was worshiping in the Ruach, in the future, in the Holy Ghost. He was working, uh, worshiping for his destiny. He was seeing all the way through his time of his lease on the earth, 6,000 years. He was looking at it. He was seeing through the prophetic windows of time. And he would worship according to that. And the life of the day would be charged and come up. And what animated the whole day began to come alive and so strong that God would walk up in it and say, walk with me, Adam, to your destiny. So if you begin to worship today, not according to what you see, but according to what is going to be and what he promised, the day will be ordered to carry you there. Hallelujah. So maybe we got that part said. So when we, you hear prophets start prophesying, the rightful president, Donald J. Trump, that's who heaven recognizes as the president. 2020 won't go away. It won't go away. Why won't it go away, Brother Robin? Because it's in the wind. It was destiny. And destiny, will, a storm kicked up to try to stop it. But it won't go away. And it'll never go away until it's fixed. And so prophets keep prophesying what they saw. How can we say but, but what we've seen and what we've heard? I can't say any more than that. 
no matter what it may be, no matter what it may be. When I speak that government entities and, and, and speak about, when I spoke about the state and I talked about two adulterous affairs and all of this and, and all of that in the Supreme Court of, of, of this state and so forth, I, I said, fix it. Just fix it. I don't know who. I don't know what. I just heard it, so what do I do? Not say it. Well, God forbid. I will say it. I will say it. What is my staff in this one ring? Some of you remember the vision I saw. And the staff is to remain there and hold that place. That represents prophets. There are things going on, and, and if you start to look, you'll see the trial of righteousness is owned in the United States. It's owned in the world, the trial of righteousness. Some of you heard me talk about that. And did I mention that Sunday? Did I say something about that Sunday, the trial of righteousness? And he said, you be sure you don't let it into your family circles. In other words, keep your family circles right. Because the trial of righteousness now is in the earth. And things are being tried. Things are being weighed in the balance. You saw the other day when Mitch McConnell just froze. And nobody can figure out to this day why. They try to say this, they try to say that, but look at the concern on the people's face around him. They were very concerned. Why won't this thing with Hunter Biden go away? Because it's in the trial of righteousness right now. And listen to me close. Every government entity, Supreme Courts, whether they be statewide, nationwide, makes no difference. Even what's be equivalent to the local governments. If every decision you make right now is being weighed in the balance, the trial of righteousness is happening now. See, it's the time of the lions. It's the time of the lion. Some of you remember when the Lord told us that. It's at the time of the lion. Well, the time of the lion. Well, in the time of the lion, everybody has their time with the lions. Krista had an awesome revelation about Daniel and the lion's den. Maybe she'll tell you about that sometime. But let me tell you something about the time, your time with the lions. You're either going to be a Daniel that they're trying to put you in the lion's den. And that I'm speaking to prophets. But the Lord will shut the mouth of the lions. Or you're going to be those who, who tried to frame Daniel and put him in that lion's den. They had their time with the lions, but it affected their whole families. It affected their whole families. Every one of their them, their wives, their children, everything was destroyed. The lions in their time, the lions break their bones before they could hit the ground. So in the time of the lion, the lion comes through the land. This is the trial of righteousness. Government entities have gotten arrogant until they fill the room with their odor and choke the, the, the breath out of normal people. Because they think they're gods. But you're not God. You're not even close. You only have an image of him. And most of you, a lot of you, may not even be able to reveal him. See, everybody, everybody is supposed to be able to reveal God and reflect God. Only those born again serving him can reveal him. Those that are not born again can only reflect him like a stagnant water uh, mud puddle. You can see a reflection in it. The sun can even hit it and make it look beautiful, but it's just stagnant water. But those that are living for God can not only reflect him, but reveal him to you. And so here we are in this time of righteousness, and governments have and, and I'm talking about local all the way to the highest. I'm not just talking about one sector. 
And I'm not just talking about one or two people. There are people that, that governments and courts think they have on trial and they don't realize they're being tried by heaven. And however they treat them is how they're judged. And don't think that God can't replace every one of you. He can replace every judge known by next week. He could replace every governor, every leader, every mayor in a week, in a day. The book is full of things like that. How he did things in a day. Remember when there was a shortage? We don't remember, but you read it in Elisha's day. And that's the time we're in, the time of Elisha. The time of the double. That's why you hear prophets, uh, you know, people say, well, you're, you're, you're John the Baptist. No, I'm not. I may speak and sound like him a lot with that kind of prophecy, but that, that's not, I actually walk in an anointing like Elisha, similar to that. There's already been an Elisha and an and a Elijah and a John. But there's anointings that resemble that. And Elisha spoke like Elijah, and he spoke like Elisha. And so that's what you're seeing. You're seeing these anointings and the boldness of Elijah or John the Baptist is being spoke. That's what, that's what people are hearing. And then you hear Elisha. That kind of anointing. And you'll hear the Samuel anointing. And you'll hear David's anointing. And you'll hear Jeremiah's anointing. You'll hear these sounds. That's why they looked at Jesus and said, when he said, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Well, some say you're John the Baptist, risen from the dead. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're one of the prophets, Jeremiah. One of the, why? Because he, he spoke bold like Elijah. He, he's, he wept like Jeremiah. He, he did these things. But right now, I'm really needing you to hear this, especially if you're a politician and especially if you're a judge. Whether you're a local probate judge all the way up to Supreme Court justices, every decision being made is being weighed. Oh, now you've got to hear this. Because the enemy has kicked up a storm to keep my America, the Lord says, from its destination. There's been a storm brought up on the seas of nations to keep my Israel from its destination. There's a storm swelled up within the waters of the nations and the seas of the world. I speak of nations to keep men and women that I made a promise to, says the Lord, to bring them to their destination. There's been an occurrence of filth, an occurrence of immorality, and the swelling of legalities, legislating lies, to keep my people from the other side. So I have come to see if the cry is as great as I've heard, says the Lord. And so now it will be weighed in the balance. Judges make right judgments. Attorneys and lawyers, clean your act up. Clean your ass up for too many asses, donkeys are influencing your words. The world is not created according to the mouth of an ass. The governments are not established according to the braying of a midnight donkey. 
The governments are established on righteousness and the word of God. So clean your ass up. Clean it up. And speak the truth. So that justice and righteousness may reign. Because there is a destination for you also. And a destination of greatness for the politicians. I called to be in the place of government. There is a destination. And the swelling of the storm in the sea has come to stop it from being. But nay, it will not stop it. For I will have my say before you are caught away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now can you hear the love and the authority in warnings? For God wants all to meet their destination and to go into their destinies. But seas and storms come to stop it. But behold, says the Lord, my people are learning to rest in me. They're learning to rest in me knowing I will get the ship safely to the other side. So hear the word of the Lord. Peace, be still. Shut up winds and waves. Be still. There is a great calm. Hallelujah. My goodness. My goodness. You know, when things get, they swell to the point they're dangerous. Not just for nations and, and groups of people, but when they swell to the point that they're dangerous in keeping everyone from their destinies. You know, a global reset and a global one world government is only to do one thing. Change your course of destiny to the course of, of the destiny they want to create. That's all that's about. Satan wants to yoke mankind like an ox and use, use a lesser being using the image of God to plow his furrows through the earth. This is not to be. This is not to be, it will only really take place in, for seven years at a certain time when the prophets end their testimony that will begin, foreshadowing what will come in Revelation 11. But then there's really only three and a half years where there's any real authority to be seen. So this is not, and that's only because the seed of the serpent was planted eons ago but the heel of the woman's seed will surely bruise his head amen so today go ahead and worship in your prophetic euphoric worship and worship according to your destiny worship if you don't know what your personal destiny exactly what God wants you to do there are promises in this book right here that promises you a future to give you an expected end every blessing in it is for you every single one of them is yours well you say well some of them's for Israel yeah but you've been grafted in so the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That entitles you to them all. All. And he said, thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Now you know why he said all. He, he meant to get it back to everybody. Make it available to you all. Hallelujah. Man, I could just keep going, but I think it's time to, to hand you the mic and and let the Lord just begin to minister in prosperity and show the people how to prosper and 